This is a video demonstration on the circular magnetic field that's produced around a straight current conducting wire. So for this one what we use is either the first uh, left hand rule uh, or uh, first right hand rule depending on how we want to do it. So the setup here is we have a piece of plexiglass that has uh, positive going in on the right side of the screen and a wire that comes up through the plexiglass and then the conventional current will flow from the positive, so down the screen, more or less, um, back through that wire underneath the plexiglass, and then back to the battery. So what we're looking to look at is we're looking at the wire on top, um, and uh, what the first, if we use the first right-hand rule, uh, what should be predicted is, is that if we put a current into here, because the conventional current is down the screen uh, with the thumb, uh, below the wire, the magnetic field line should be to the right, and on top of the wire, it should be to the left. If we use the left-hand rule instead, we still should get the same answer. Uh, this time the conventional flow is going up the screen, so, uh, sorry, the electron flow is going up the screen. Uh, and then we use the left-hand rule, so on top of the wire, the magnetic field line should be to the left, and on the bottom should be to the right. So let's uh, turn that on and see what if our prediction is correct. So if we put the compass on top of the wire, you'll notice that the magnetic field line is to the left. And if we put it underneath the wire, that the magnetic field line is to the right, which is a confirmation of what we predicted. This is a video demonstration on the straight magnetic field that's produced through the center of a coil or a solenoid um, that has a current running through it. So this is the one you might have made when you were a child, uh, when you wrapped a nail uh, in wire and hooked it to a battery and it became an electromagnet, uh, kind of the ones they use at dumps um, for lifting cars. So that's what we're going to make here. So uh, we're going to put an iron core in this loop of wire. And so what you'll notice is, is that there's wrappings on the wire, uh, or on the coil, and it shows the direction of uh, the flow coming from that plug. So on the right side, you'll notice the red wire, that's your conventional current. And so the conventional current's going to come in there, and then the, it's going to uh, flow down in front according to the white wrappings. So if we use the first right-hand rule, um, the conventional current would be down in the front and up in the back, and your thumb should point to the north end of the magnet created, so uh, what we should predict here is that the right end of the electromagnet solenoid or coil, uh, once we put electricity into it, a current the right side should be north. We get the same answer if we use the left-hand rule, but this time what we're going to do is use electron flow. So here, uh, the electrons come in the black plug and then they go down in the back and up in the front. But what you'll notice is, is that your thumb still points to the right side. And so what that shows is, is that we get the same answer no matter which rule we use as long as we do it correctly. So if we bring the compass in and we bring it to the right side of the coil and we turn it on, what we should predict is that sh that should be the north end of the magnet created. So you'll notice that the south pole of the compass is pointed at it, so that's the north end. And so if we take the compass to the other side, that should be the south end. And that's confirmed by the north end of the compass pointing at it. And so that is a quick demonstration on the second hand rule that describes the straight magnetic field through the center of a coil of wire. This is a demonstration on what's called the electromotive force or the force on a wire that has a sudden current running through it that is placed in an external magnetic field. This is the rule that allows us to convert electrical energy into kinetic energy of motion. It's kind of the reason why your car wheels turn. So uh, what we do is it's called, we can use the uh, third hand rule and we can either use the right hand rule or the left hand rule. But what we'll do first of all is you'll see a wood block in, on the screen. If we put a wire across it and 
so that wire is free to move. If we turn on the current, not much should happen because there's no external magnetic field. So the wire just kind of sits there. If we bring in a really strong magnet though and place it in there, and so you'll notice that the top of the magnet is north and the bottom is south. So if we use the first, or sorry, the third right hand rule, um, your palm, your hand is straight, the magnetic field is down the page, the conventional current is to the left of the page or the screen, so there must be a force out. So if we turn uh, this sucker on, what should happen is the wire should jump out. Um, We'll get the same result if we use the left hand. So if we use the left hand, the uh, magnetic field is still down the screen or down the page, but now the electron flow is to the right of the screen and still the force is out. So if we uh, turn this current on, what should happen or what should be predicted is the wire should jump out of the screen, which is exactly what happens. If we turn it off and we turn the magnet upside down to switch the polarity, we won't go over the hand rules, but you can probably predict what's going to happen. Uh, you could use the, the third right hand rule or the third left hand rule, and when we turn it on, the wire should jump in, which is exactly what it does. So that's a demonstration of the force on a current conducting wire that's placed in an external magnetic field. This is a video demonstration on the motor principle which uses the uh, third left or right hand rule uh, for magnetism and it describes the force that's on a uh, wire conductor that's in an external magnetic field that has a sudden current uh, flowing through it and there's a force on the wire. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to turn electrical energy into mechanical energy or kinetic energy of motion that we can use. So it's the basic idea why your car wheels turn for electricity. So the apparatus is made up of a small battery and a really strong magnet on it and then a coil of wire. Um, the coil of wire is kind of specific. It is a current only flows if there is uh, nice contact between the, the two poles. So on one side it's completely stripped with um, sandpaper. On the other side um, only half of it was removed so as it turns halfway around um, there'll be a current because it's stripped on uh, both sides. As it turns 180 degrees uh, where it's still coated, no current will be flowing, but the momentum will keep it turning. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna give it a little push just to get it going. And we'll see how long that keeps going. Push it in the middle a little bit. All right. So we'll just turn the paper a little bit just so you can see what's going on there. So you'll notice that it keeps turning. Um, so it's turning when it's uh, there's a force on the wire when there's a current running through it, and then when it rotates halfway around when there's no current, the momentum keeps it going. But eventually the battery will go dead. Uh, but this is the main idea of how we um, get to turn electrical energy into energy of motion. So the toy you see behind you, uh, the Darth Maul one, my son's favorite character, um, uses the same idea. So this has a DC battery in it and it's just one of these little fans to cool you down. So if you push the button, you'll notice that the motor turns and it's pretty much the exact same idea as the uh, world's smallest motor.